All right, y'all. So, about to go ahead to emissions. I got the brakes bled, so we about to go ahead and handle that. I'll see y'all when we get to the emissions place. I might cut y'all on uh, when I get there um, or on the way. I had to get my brother's help to bleed the brakes. That vacuum bleeding stuff wasn't working or else I would have recorded it, but we on our way now. What's good, Grind Schoolers? It's your boy, Robin. We back in the shop today. I tell you, if it's not one thing, it's another, man. Um, so we had the Impala 100% ready to go. Um, got the coil, coilovers back, or got the coilovers on the car, got the uh, upper control arms on. Um, I couldn't get the lower ones on, but we'll do that one at a later date. Um, I got some ideas to get that up off of there, but... Um, I went to start the car up uh, probably a few days ago. It was really, really cold outside. It was like zero degrees. I um, went to start the car up. I had the car kind of lifted up in the front um, so I could do the power steering. Um, so I turned the power steering, locked the lock, fixed the power steering issue. Um, and unfortunately, um, the car started to like stall out, bog out or whatever. And so what I was thinking was it was the gas um, because I don't know. Um, the gas in this car has been in here for probably about a year and a half. I haven't put any gas in it since then because it was at the shop. It was there for a while. It was just sitting there and I don't know how much gas is in the car. Um, and so pretty much the gas gauge, I don't even know if it works or whatever. So I went to go get gas, put some good gas in here, some fuel additive and all that kind of good stuff. And the car um, was kind of sputtering a little bit. So I was thinking it was uh, cycling the bad gas out of there. So um now the car is running well um since i put all the good gas in there and all that kind of stuff the car's running well everything is all good everything's all solid i was trying to get it to the exhaust shop yesterday which was saturday and i look under the car and there's a leak so and i'm explaining all this to you guys because unfortunately we have another issue um there was a leak and so um i look up under the hood don't really see anything um take the car and test drive go out there whatever whatever um and i look up under the hood once i'm done with the test drive and i notice that my brake master cylinder has all kind of fluid on it there's fluid dripping under um the car exactly where the, under the master cylinder and all that kind of stuff and so now we have to replace the master cylinder so that's exactly what we're going to be doing today um luckily i found one there was only one that i could find i went to all the auto parts stores and nobody had it not advanced not AutoZone. um o'reilly's didn't have it but they had one way across the other side of town so i had to go pick it up um and the ones from summit racing weren't going to ship until next month or may so i'm like you know that's going to really really uh put a hold on everything so that's what we're going to be doing today I fortunately was able to find one. So we're gonna slap that on there, bleed the brakes, uh, make sure all the suspension parts are tightened up and then we can get this thing to the exhaust shop and pray that there's no other issues. Um, but anyways, man, before we could jump into the video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification. Also share this video with a friend. Um, if you like the content, enjoy the content, help me get out there in the algorithm, I would greatly appreciate it. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, y'all. So you guys won't be able to see the leak on the ground because i covered it up with the cardboard but as you can see right here um it's leaking down right here that little um dirty spot or whatever after my test drive um you could tell all of this was wet and so um i don't want to drive the car like that because uh obviously once the power steering uh or once the brake fluid uh goes away there will be no brakes. Um, and then once air gets in the line, doesn't matter if you put brake fluid in there or not. Plus brake fluid is highly flammable and I don't need it uh, somehow uh, when I hit the brakes splattering onto my exhaust manifold um, after it gets hot. So luckily we were able to find one. Hopefully this one that I got works and we'll be good to go slap it on, bleed the brakes. And then tomorrow I can take this thing to get the exhaust on finally. Um, and we'll be good to go. So uh, pretty much I'm just gonna unbolt it from the um, brake booster 
and we're going to take the brake lines out of it, slap the new one on, um, fill it with brake fluid, and then start vacuum bleeding the brakes. Um, and then that sound that was coming from the power steering, last time I drove the car in my last video of me driving the car, you can hear the car really, really, really loud. Um, I fixed that. So now the car is really quiet. Um, even the idle speed sounds normal-ish. Um, doesn't sound too crazy like I thought it was. So I'm hoping that all of that is good. Everything on here is pretty much new. Um, <clears throat> we have new distributor cab rotor, new um, coolant temperature sensor, new water pump, new thermostat, new coolant, um, new power steering. Only things that we don't have is new oil and new transmission filter um, and gasket and stuff like that, which I'll take that to um, Jiffy Lube or something to do. Um, we have new air filter. We're about to have a new uh, master cylinder. It has new brakes. So the car should be, theoretically should be good. There should be no issues um, with this car. Uh, but this LT1 is a dog, man. Like, it, I, you know, I said I wanted to keep it, which I will keep it for a while. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not going to change. But eventually, this, this car is going to be LS powered. I'm not dealing with this LT1. It's mad slow. I'm not dealing with it. Um, this is probably the slowest car that I have. I mean, obviously, my wife's car, but... Um, this car here is the slowest car I have by far. Even my truck is a lot faster than this thing. Um, and that thing weighs probably like 6,000 pounds. But um, for all y'all that rock with these LT1s, that's cool. I don't remember it being this slow, but you know, when you have a 600 horsepower Camaro, I guess, you know, things change. But um, yeah, this thing is really slow. So we're gonna definitely L, uh, LS it eventually, um, not anytime soon because I have so much more to do, but it will eventually be LS'd um, because I'm, I'm obviously keeping this car forever. I probably won't ever sell this thing. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and swap this master cylinder out and then um, I'll lift the car up, bleed the brakes and yeah. We'll be done with this this project, get the car to the exhaust shop, and we'll be good. y'all we got the uh the old one off we're gonna throw the new one on now i'm a little upset that o'reilly sold me a brake master cylinder that looks like this um it's really like ugly you know what i'm saying it should be like you know like this color or no like this color like the color of these cups it should be like that man but you know this is remanufactured and that's the only one that i could get um, really quickly, like yesterday, you know what I'm saying? Without having to wait, I want to get this car to the exhaust shop on Monday, which is tomorrow. So that's the reason why I went ahead and just took it. No harm, no foul. It's all good, whatever. Uh, this will probably be switched over to a Willwood, um, uh, brake master cylinder anyway, one day. Um, but right now I had to do what I had to do. Um, but fun fact, yo, um, I was actually working on a Caprice, years 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 ago um and i actually ended up having to go to the hospital and get stitches because i couldn't get the um these little um nuts out of the uh, master cylinder that i was trying to grab um and the wrench actually slipped um after i had cut the little brake lines down here and my hand like went up or my wrist went up into the um went up into the brake lines and I have actually like a little scar. I thought I had like ruptured one of my veins. Um, so I was like really freaking out, went ahead and tied up a, a rag 
around my arm and had to drive like an hour up to you know my college to get to the hospital and um so fun fact do not use regular box wrenches on those types of fittings and that goes for down there at the uh power steering um that goes into the gearbox any type of style fittings that are attached to the line you probably want to use um one of these wrenches like this it makes the job a lot easier um and the chances of it slipping off are pretty slim to none um the wrench won't just slip off so fun fact i ended up uh having to go to the hospital because of a situation that had to do with the brake lines. Don't use regular box wrenches. You'll make your life a lot better, a lot simpler if you just use regular or the ones that have just that little tiny opening and things will be solid. I didn't have none at the time and I was trying to, you know, hurry up. I was working on, you know, some random person's car that was parting out the car. He didn't have it off. He didn't really know what to do. And I was getting it for the homie and I had the tools to get it. And unfortunately, I ended up, you know what I'm saying, like having a, I paid the price for it, I should say. But anyways, it was nothing too crazy. I ended up getting stitches, but um, yeah, just like I said, um, if you ever do this job, most of y'all probably already know this anyway, but for the ones who don't, do not use regular box wrenches on those types of fittings. Um, but anyways, man, we're gonna slap this one on there, um, tighten it down, and then, uh, Fill it with brake fluid, lift up the back of the car, bleed the brakes. Um, I don't know with this vacuum bleeding process, I haven't really done vacuum bleeding before. I've only done um, the type of bleeding where, you know, you lift up the car, you start at the, the back of the car, um, furthest from, the, uh, furthest from the, the front of the car, which is the back passenger. You know what I'm saying? Have somebody step on the brake until, you know, there's no more sputtering, no more like, uh, air coming out of the line, then you go to the driver's side, then the passenger side, and then the driver's side. Um, I'm not sure if that's what I'm gonna have to do or not. We're gonna see. But um, yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's finish this job super quick, simple, easy, and we should be good to go. No more issues. All right, y'all, we got uh, the master cylinder tightened up. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some of this dot three up in here. And we should be good to go. Um, a second. All right, y'all, we got everything tightened up. <clears throat> um, we'll go ahead and throw some of this dot three brake brake fluid in there. Um, I gotta uh, Windex my windshield because it's mad dusty. So we'll do that too. Um, I'm pretty much gonna overfill it because I'm gonna lose a lot of it. And hopefully we don't have no leaks and hopefully we have enough of this. Um, I got the big bottle, so hopefully, you know what I mean? That should be good. Uh, I'm gonna start bleeding the brakes. I'm gonna start at the back and then work my way up to the front. So let me go ahead and jump on that. And then uh, this should be good to go. I still gotta tighten down the bumper. Um, so that I could dry the car. And then um, I wanna kinda see if I'll roll this fender a little bit <clears throat> and uh, get that wrapped up. So let me jump on this, get this done so I can drive the amp today. All right, y'all. So about to go ahead to emissions. I got the brakes bled, so we're about to go ahead and handle that. I'll see y'all when we get to the emissions place. I might cut y'all on uh, when I get there. Um, or on the way, I had to get my brother's help to bleed the brakes. That vacuum bleeding stuff wasn't working or else I would've recorded it, but we on our way now. All right, y'all, so we at this emissions place, so hopefully we get a shorty emission, you know. Hopefully she passed, cause we sitting in this long line waiting for these people to get, get done with what they gotta do, you know what I mean? But uh, I'm thinking she should pass, I don't see why not hasn't nothing been modified or nothing wrong with the car so it should be all right i must say that i am happy about the performance of the car um you know i wish it was faster you know <laughs> <laughs> so fun fact when i had my 83 caprice um me and my brother here we get on it we, we dog it, we step on it, car didn't go nowhere. 
Same thing happened today. This car didn't go nowhere, so I don't know what's wrong with it. Uh, like I said, it might be a vacuum leak or whatever. Somebody has suggested that to me. Um, but this car is a dog, and I don't remember the LT1 being this slow. You know what I mean? But we're going to get it all straight, man. Um, like I said, eventually it's going to be LS, but right now I need to have some type of get up and go. Like when I step on the gas and step to the flow, this thing don't go. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, so we got to figure it out, y'all. But we sitting here, you know what I'm saying, just chilling. Uh, you know what I mean? Just chilling, relaxing, maxing, waiting for these people to come yeah, and listen to this car. Hopefully, I ain't got to do this again. I really hope that I pass. I done filled this car up with premium fuel. It was $70 to fill this car up, and it's never been that way before. And I think since the gas tank is heavy, the back is sagging because the uh, right uh, rear is rubbing again. So um, I know that's for a fact that that's why it's like that. And there's the, those uh, rims are in the back and then there's two of us in here. So the car is like riding a lot lower, you know what I mean? Anyways, <clears throat> we gonna go ahead and pull up, get this thing in mission. Hopefully uh, y'all see my happy face after we're done and it's not an upset face because I did a lot of hard work to get this thing here. So, you know what I'm saying? Bear with me, we gonna get this thing done. And then uh, I'll move on to the next to the crib um i probably drove it about 20 miles maybe um she did pretty good man uh i am rubbing in the back because um uh, well as you can see this little dark spot right here is rubbing um i don't think i'm going to raise the car uh just because of the simple fact that the only reason why it's so overloaded like this is because i have those wheels in the back um, and then I went to go to the gas station to get gas and I filled it up pretty much. So that's why it's sagging. Um, we'll probably go ahead and like uh, roll it a little bit up in here just so we'll, we can get it, you know, situated and then we'll push the wheel back. And I think for the front, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go ahead and um, get a, a new inner fender to fix this problem. So uh we should be good but man she did pretty good she failed emissions unfortunately but you know it is what it is so anyways man i'm not gonna stall y'all out we gotta figure out the emission situation but you know we're gonna keep moving forward i mean you know got the brakes on there uh or bled the brakes got that done everything seems pretty kosher rode it for a little while and you know had a little bit of fun it doesn't sound that great. Um, I wanted to get it to the exhaust shop today, but you know, obviously God had other plans for me. So it's all good though. All right, grind schoolers, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed it, man. Um, I've worked super hard trying to get this car on the road, trying to get it together, trying to get everything uh, solid and situated so that I could get it to the emissions place just to fail emissions is is kind of discouraging man it's it's actually really discouraging because i you know tags expire um in two days they expire in two days i mean it's not that big of a deal to drive with expired tags um but i just want everything to be solid so anyways i'm not really tripping on the the tag situation it's still gonna go head out there to um the exhaust shop um, now I gotta wait a couple of weeks just because the exhaust shop that I go to, they're only open every other Saturday. Um, and then today, since it's Monday, uh, I would have been able to get it done today um, had I been able to get the car ready by today or early this morning, which obviously that didn't happen. So I just decided to take it to the emissions instead, at least try to knock out something. But unfortunately, it failed it. So, um, you know, we didn't get that accomplished, but we did get the brake uh, fluid situation straightened out. All the brake fluid is good. 
um, brakes are black, the car, you know, performs really well other than some type of hesitation, which is, I think, the reason why the car is failing emissions. There's something wrong with, like, the CO2 levels, which is probably causing it to, you know, sputter and do whatever it's doing, and which is probably causing it to drive like a dog, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, this thing is really slow. Um, not sure why, but, you know, we'll figure it out. Um, like I said, it's it's not a big deal. Um, you know, you know, can't cry over spilled milk, we'll get it done. Um, next thing, we'll get the exhaust done. And then after that, um, just still sort out the suspension, uh, not the suspension, but sort out these rubbing issues, um, more specifically in the front. I'm not really worried about the back because like I said, I could probably just take the wheels out and it'd be all good. Because before I got the uh, gas in the car, um, the car wasn't like rubbing or doing nothing crazy. But once I put that gas in there, it started to rub. Uh, and I can just adjust the coil over up and down. Um, I can adjust it up one notch um, and it'll be all right. But um, I am trying to sort out this front fender. We'll get that fixed and then we'll start doing the body work and you know, sanding the car down and getting it prepped and ready for paint. Um, we still gotta do you know, the tune-up stuff, emission stuff. We'll figure that all, all that stuff out in due time. Um, I'm not gonna stress about it, but um, yeah, that's gonna do it, man. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell notification so you get a notification every single time we drop another video. The Impala is well on its way to be on the road. Um, today was the furthest that I've driven the car probably ever. Um, like I said, I drove it from my old house to my new house. And that was probably the longest drive that I had driven the car since I had gotten it. Um, other than that, I've only driven it around the neighborhood, um, around like my old house and around this house that I'm at now. But prior to that, um, like I hadn't really done uh, much to, or much with the car. Like I said, today was the longest drive that I've driven the car and it did really, really well. Um, I didn't have any overheating issues. I'm, I actually think um, that hood scoop really actually helps a lot because I noticed my, while I was idling, my coolant uh, gauge was kind of going like a little bit higher. Um, and as I was driving back home, the coolant gauge was like, really really like going to the low spot um i have like 160 or 180 degree thermostat in there it has new coolant temperature sensor new water pump all that kind of good stuff um and then the hood scoop uh obviously has that opening in there um to allow air um into the engine bay cool it down and stuff like that so i'm not really 200 percent sure if that made a difference or not but all i know is you know the cooling gauge was was uh, going pretty low and I know from the history of having um, these LT1 motors I feel like they generally run hot I'm not 100% sure but my my last uh, uh, 9C1 that I had ran pretty hot and the homies 9C1s um, I guess they wouldn't be 9C1s but the homies LT1s um, have done the same thing so anyways it is what it is man we're gonna keep on rocking it out we're gonna figure out this emissions thing get it done get plates on the car that is not too big of an issue um and then yeah so stay tuned man we got a lot still in store we still got a lot to do um and we still gonna just keep um rocking it out and getting things done so without further ado always remember work hard so you can live free mm -hmm.